Alright guys, I'm doing this video about how to build food drive, because people do ask me about that, and they say the dog won't eat treats, you know, what else can we do? And the problem with that is, quite frankly, if we can't get it to eat treats, we're probably just kidding ourselves that we can get it to do anything else, if it, if it won't even eat food. Something that's a requirement to live. You know, if we can't even get it to do that, um, uh, hey girl, then we're not going to be able to get it to do anything else. I mean, it, you know, you can't say, well, I can't get it to eat a treat, but now I'll get it to do something. It's not, that's, it's, it, it's not going to happen. And the reason, and this is what I tell people, because they say, shouldn't we use, you know, tug as a reward and all these things? One, no. People are not physically capable of that. The problem with that is the dog views that as weakness on their part. You know, they do. They do. And if you say, well, competition trainers do it and all these things, well, they're keeping a balance. They have a better idea what's going on. Your average pet owner, this is where you're going to get into a bind. If you don't train it with treats, they're going to give it treats anyway, for God only knows what. And then that's just going to erode your training. So you've got to say to yourself, the jumping off point is a dog that will accept treats. And I've had plenty of them that didn't have any food drive. That dog, Fred, that I just posted that video of the other day, I had forgotten it didn't have any food drive. Uh, hi, Shai. Uh, and you saw what it was at the end. And, you know, because it was such a hinky, fearful dog. Uh, you know, the only thing you, if it's a hinky, fearful dog that's looking around everywhere and waiting for something to get hinky on, your only bet is to get this thing looking at you. It's, it's your only bet. If it's looking around it's, and it's a hinky dog, it's going to see something pretty quick. <laughs> it's going to be a problem. So this is what you have to think of. If the dog doesn't have any food drive, if somebody calls me and says, oh, it won't eat treats, I say, is it just a rack of bones? Oh, no, no, it's not a rack of bones. So, okay, so it eats its food. Uh... It eats its food, but not from you. So, okay, so now we have to understand somehow that has been damaged. Hi, Marcus. Is my little puppy still available? I might want to get that puppy for Christmas. Um, please don't tell me someone already bought it. I'm already having a, a thing about John Henry leaving. But this is what I want you guys to think of. So if it's, if it's a dog that you've owned since it was a puppy, then you did that. You damaged the relationship. There's no circuit in that dog's mind that connects you to food, and I'll tell you how people erode that. Wait, be polite, sit. They make the food so conditional with a lot of dogs, the dog just says, fuck it, fuck it, I'll eat later. Not with these people. <laughs> you know, they're not my friends. I have a very, very uh, common saying I say around him, he's not my friend. You know, so you've got to say, what's the dog's internal dialogue? That if you're offering the food and it won't take it, I'm going to tell you exactly what its internal dialogue is. That, 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 that is a precursor to something else. That's the only reason. That you giving it the food is a precursor, maybe them reaching for it, you saying be polite, do all these things. It's, it's brutal. Sit anything. So if you said, how do you... Because that dog, John Henry, won't eat dog food. I've got a pack. Uh, he's leaving Saturday. I apparently have to cook all this chicken and stuff and freeze it for him to go. You have got to start out by making, giving the food, just the action itself. It's not a precursor to anything. It's not a precursor to anything. It's not a precursor to sit. It's not a precursor to wait. It's not a precursor to be polite. None of those things. It's just relationship building. You know, so any, anybody that says to me, it won't eat treats, I, you know, you've got to go back to that point. If you honestly think it's not going to eat a treat, you're going to take it out somewhere and you're going to say down and it's going to say, I'll do that. It's not. It's not going to do that. So, hi, Marcus. Uh, hi, Sophia. Uh, anyway, so that's what you've got to do. And I think, you know, if you said, do you walk around here talking to these dogs? No, I don't. I'll tell you how I built the relationship with John Henry. I would just hand him the food and go about my business. Indifference is 
if you, if you don't possess indifference, you'll never, and Marcus will tell you that, you're not just engaging this thing every single second over every single thing. You know, there's got to be a level of indifference. So if you don't have a dog that has any food drive, you have to start out by just handing that dog a treat without saying anything and then just becoming indifferent so that the dog begins to have faith that that isn't a precursor to anything else. I mean, honestly, your average person, and you guys that train dogs know this, the first thing they do when they see a dog, sit! So now it's conditional. Now your relationship is conditional. You know, so you've got to go back, you've got to make it unconditional, and you've got to be ready, and I know it's hard, if you're under pressure, if you've got somebody leaving a dog with you, uh, and you have to drain it, yeah, I mean, I understand, I mean, I, I take them for two months, so I've got a little bit more time, but you've, you've got to, you know, it, it might only take two or three days, but you've got to remove whatever this inhibition is that this dog believes that taking food from your hand is a problem. And you guys have seen the recalls I put on these little itty bitty puppies. I mean, it's almost getting to be too much because they just slam into me and stuff. But, you know, they, it's obvious, you can condition that into a dog. You know, so if the, that, if that's true, if we can condition that into a dog, it's obvious we can condition it out of a dog. If these dogs won't eat treats and they're a rack of bones, half of them are fat as a bear. You know, but they won't take traits from the people. So you have to face the fact that you've done something to damage the relationship. Because if somebody calls, let me make an analogy. If somebody I don't like calls me and says, do you want to go out to eat? I say, no, <laughs> I can't go. I make up all kinds of crazy stories. Oh, anything. Because I don't want to go. Because I don't want to eat with these people. Because we don't have that kind of relationship. You know, so it's just, it's relationship building. And if you said, well, it's going gonna, it's gonna to take two weeks to build up the food drive, you'd be better off to do that than to try to just dismiss that and go at it without, you know. And, and this is what people say. Well, what if I use the toy? And Marcus will tell you this. Dogs with high uh, food drive have high toy drive. Dogs without, with no food drive don't have a high toy drive that I've ever seen. You know, those things go hand in hand. If you have a dog that has a lot of drive, you may have to understand these drives are all running, you know, parallel to each other. So it's really not, you're not going to generally, you know, if you t just take high drive Labradors, I'm going to tell you, you're not going to find anybody that says that thing doesn't eat like a pig. You know, uh, you know, you can go to any of these kennels. If you ask them how long does it take them to eat, you know, you're talking about seconds. So they're just, they're, you know, devouring the whole world. They're devouring everything in front of them because they've been told that that's the way they should do it. So when they're not doing that, they've been told. So if you've got a dog that's got low drive and then these people are kind of pushing it down, now it's just kind of plateauing right there. So you've got to be creative. And people always ask me what kind of treats I use, all different kind. I'm sure I'm not the only person that thinks uh, fun is getting new cookies and seeing if they like it. So you've got to be creative. Do not, you know, and you've got to use different traits for different locations. I'm going to tell you, if I was going to take them out and I wanted to make sure they were tight, I would probably cook chicken or something. I'm not going to get little treats out of a bag or anything like that. So... You know, that's what you have to understand. For companion dogs, obviously for working dogs, that's a completely different thing. Oh, and I want to tell you guys, I talked to Mark. Mark the dog trainer. There's like four Marks in the show. But Mark the dog trainer, the one that's the um, high point, uh, all-time high point derby dog. Uh, Courtney, I don't know if you're watching, but he applied at K2. Now he's going back to training bomb dogs. He may, if, he appears, if he's here in about a week, don't be surprised because he doesn't know what he's doing. Uh, but he applied at K2, and he's... he's He's a genius. He's a genius with a broken soul. He's a genius with a broken soul. Anyway, so I don't know what's going to happen with that, but just don't be surprised. if He's there on the show in a week, you know. I'll leave him here. I, he was one person I would trust, it, you know. Like, I can't leave anybody here because of that Doberman. Oh, Mark can handle that Doberman without a problem. So, nah, Marcus, you can handle it too. But Anyway, you guys, so that's what's going on. You've got to say to yourself... This is, what you want, this is what I want you to do. If you've got a dog that won't eat treats, you're just, you know, if you said, I have a relationship with somebody and 
if you've got a long-term relationship with somebody that doesn't involve winks and nods and looks, that's not a very good relationship because that's how relationships go. So the longer term the relationship is, if you're still requiring this freaking dog sit every time you give it, you know, that's good. It's, you're eroding the relationship. So what you need to do is another thing that helps build food drive, you guys, is ritualistic behavior involving the food. And I don't want, I don't want you guys to do this too much, but it does help. And if you said, well, what's ritualistic behavior? involving food to a dog, you going in the kitchen and starting to, you know, chop a knife or open up the fridge and the microwave, putting stuff in there. They understand this is a ritualistic behavior that's a precursor to food. So that's what you have to think of. If, if the dog won't eat the food because it believes that it's a precursor to something, you have to make precursors to food. I know that sounds crazy, but you've got to take your timeline and take it from where the dog is thinking it is and back it up. Okay, so now there's the buildup. And you said, well, what would that be in humans? When you're sitting in the kitchen smelling the lasagna, that's the precursor. You know, now it's a buildup. Now you're really loving the food. So that's what you guys have to think of. If you have to, this is what I would do. And now I had that dog, Katie, and wow, that dog was so damaged. And I finally did get it eating the food. And the way I had to do it initially was not even give it the food by hand. I would just set the food there and that was it. I was just a being that set food down and walked away. I set food down and walked away. I set food down and walked away. And then I started giving it by hand and walking away, giving it by hand and walking away. This is what I want you to remember. Hi, Abraham. If you ask no task of the dog, you risk no failure. And you don't want failure. So if you're just handing it the food and doing that, and then you're getting it, you know, and so then you said what? So then you kind of get it addicted to the food, and then it's willing to do Absolutely. Absolutely. It understands. But you're going to have to do a lot of ritualistic precursors first, which I would suggest things like we have a cutting board and a certain knife here. If these dogs see me getting that, the, the precursors that they understand is me going to the fridge, because I'm usually getting, and now I'm going to the cutting board. Oh, Barkley, you could make friends with him in a minute. All you had to do was be Chef Gordon. And, you know, and I would say, and I would, you know, food falls and things like that. And that, and that may be even how you have to start. It's ritualistic behavior at the food. And then the food falls on the floor. And you don't, as you normally might have done in the past, say, no, 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 don't touch it. You just let the dog eat the food. And then you go on. And then you go from there until you can get it to take it from your hand. Because if we said drive is forward momentum, and it won't even take one step forward to get a treat, well, you're screwed. You're screwed. You're then pulling the dog along. You're now pulling along, you know, 80 pounds or whatever it is, forcing it against its will. And so it's not going to change its opinion. So that's what, I want you, that's what I want you guys to think of. If it doesn't have food drive, it believes food is a precursor to something bad, you know, it believes food's a precursor to something bad. So the only way you can do that is, and I hope this is making sense, but okay, so now it, the dog sees it as here's the food, that means something bad. You've got to back up. Now, there's precursors to food leading up, and then nothing bad, nothing bad. There's dogs that damaged, though. That dog, Katie, I mean, it took it, it, it believed... It believed you giving it a food was some kind of setup, you know, like you were going to say no or, I mean, it would actually just get this look on its face. I'll go find the videos of it. I did actually get it. Let's just say if it was a car, it would be driving about five miles an hour. That's how much I built up the drive. But before that, it was going in reverse. So, you know, and I really, really worked at it and I required nothing of this dog. I required nothing. And if you said, how do you get that, those fast recalls in your puppies? I require nothing. I require nothing. I don't have them come running over there and say Sid or anything else. I, I think the key is to become immediately indifferent, move the dog out of your eye line and go about and do like I do and wear a hoodie. And then when you, you know, build a relationship with the dog. So it's me and you and 
I've got a lot of gifts. I've got a lot of gifts, and they're unconditional. They're unconditional. Here you go. You know, so that's where you guys have to start. So, uh, hi, Rachel. Oh, that makes sense to you. Well, you know, I mean, think of it. You know, there was, uh, let me just use in a little example, because with people, it's money. If you said, what's the closest thing, you know, in dogs to food, money, I'm sorry. Because if you said money doesn't equal food, yeah, it does, yeah, it does, you know. So, there was this guy that came here, this total douchebag with his redneck son with this Great Dane that had ripped a crate apart while they were at dinner, demolished a crate, and brutally killed their little kitten. And the daughter was having a baby, and they wanted to know if I saw any red flags. <laughs> None. You know, the dog was like uh, seven years old, intact, uh, had a bad knee, and I said, honestly, I think you need to really consider maybe putting the dog down. It's a dangerous dog. It's intact. It's, you know, you're not going to get it. Nina didn't want to take it and rescue. She loves Great Danes. Can't have this thing killing everything. Uh, so this redneck went berserk. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I then threw them off my property. This guy was trying to hand me money because I had told him, because it was from Dr. Castro, that it was, you know, like a consult fee or whatever. So now this guy's trying to hand me money. I wouldn't take his money. I said, just go. I don't want your money. So I can tell you what, that's, you know, if the dog is saying it, it's kind of like that, you guys. I don't want your traits. I don't want your kindness. I don't want your anything. You know, so they're not going to want your, you know, advice about things like sitting down and heal. I'm just going to tell you that one right now. So that's what has to be changed. It's got to be unconditional and it's got to be, it's got to have a sense of genuineness to it. You guys, it can't, if, if I said to you, what do you want me to do? I, I want you to not speak one word to this dog for the rest of the day. Because if you said you can't do that, I said, I, I do it all day, every day. John Henry follows me everywhere based on my actions, not anything I say. People cripple themselves with words. If you say, how do you know that? I've trained enough deaf dogs to know. They do kind of read your lips, but, you know, if, you, if you're not speaking with your body language, they're really not listening to what you're saying. I mean, you need to just put cotton in your ears and walk around and see how, mu how many more things are obvious when you're not adding words it just you know it's it's hard for people to understand but that's why I tell people watch your videos without any sound because the dog is seeing you that's how the dog is it's not able to if you said it can turn that off and it's learned to just listen to your words no people that are really really good have understood how to make those things run hand in hand you know so it's, it's not, if you said, where do most people go wrong? Their body language is gibberish. It's gibberish. And I'll tell you, once I start figuring out someone speaks gibberish, I marginalize them. And if you said, people's dogs don't marginalize them. Oh, God, yeah, they do. Yeah, they do. If they didn't, why would they just run away from them? You know, if you said, you know, I'm going out with friends. I do have a couple friends like that, but where you have to be careful or they just take off and leave you, you know, I tell you, that's not much of a friend. So that's what you guys have to think of. So get out there, get creative. You've got to use different treats, add ritualistic behavior to, for a buildup. And then you've got to kind of add the excitement. Oh, it's yay, Chuck E. Cheese. It has to be that big. You have to condense excitement down into a little, a little tiny can Kind of like the little tiny can of whoop ass, but the opposite, you know, the little tiny can of excitement, yay, the build up, and then that's it. It's just unconditional. You're not right away demanding all these things. If, if you just said, well, I just did that for a week, I'd say, good, you know, that's where you need to be instead of trying to demand things. Try just, I want all of you guys just to try for the rest of the day, not saying anything, and see what kind of notes the dog is taking about you. Anyway, guys, I got to go out there. Oh, I wanted to tell you guys, though, if any of you guys use the, um, uh, that are in America, 
uh, use the 700 Sky Kennel, which I know you guys know what that is, the great big giant one. Uh, Amazon's got them on sale right now for 149 bucks with free shipping. I don't even know how they do it. These boxes are huge. I got a whole bunch of them out of my gate right now. So, yeah, that's a really good deal. They're usually like two, at least $235, $250. But for whatever reason, they've got them on sale right now for the gray ones for $149 with free shipping. So uh, if you guys need any of those crates, run on there and buy them. So, all right, guys, I'm going to go out there and work on some training. And thank you guys. And I'll try that for the day. Just throw away the key and act indifferent to the dog and see if that changes the balance of power. Because if you, you know, the rule of thumb is he who's the least emotionally invested holds the power. It's, if you said that's not true in people, I'd laugh and laugh. Because it is, it is. And if you said, well, that sounds like brainwashing so who cares <laughs> who cares it's a dog you know if you think I don't brainwash these things into believing I'm the greatest thing around I do I do they believe that because I've made them believe that am I the greatest no but to them I am you know so that's what you that's your job not to dumb these dogs down they're they've lived they've watched you they know what you do if you don't believe me, just do things you routinely do and watch them. They're going to, you know, they know. They see all your precursors. So if the precursor, and that's maybe where people have gone wrong, when the dog, they're preparing dinner or whatever, and something falls on the floor and they're busy saying no, no, no. So then the dog believes them giving it a food is a precursor to an attack. You know, so uh, I don't even want it. Who cares? I don't even want their money, their food, whatever it is. So... Anyway, that's what I want you guys to think. I'm going to go out there and try to get some work done. And all of you, in fact, go out there, set up your camera, start videoing and not saying anything, and walk around and just hand the dog a treat for nothing. And just see what its reaction is. If that makes it more interested in you, if it's not even interested in you, that's you. And you guys have to change that. You can be interesting. You can be more interesting. And... The only way to do that, because if you said I'm going to be all excited and emotionally invested, that can't last. That can't last all day. you got to have a level of indifference, so it's leaving the dog saying to itself, you know, if only. If only she would pay attention to me. If only she would give me a thumbs up. You know, that that would mean a lot because you devalue yourself. You devalue yourself by being too emotionally invested. And I don't want it to be that way either. When people say, well, I don't want it to be like that. I want a dog I can just love and hug. But I, I didn't invent the dog. I didn't invent the dog. You know, I just understand how their minds work. You know, so that's what you guys have to think of. I'm not going to say anything for the rest of the day to my dogs. All of you, none of you, Abraham, Rachel, none of you, you're not going to say anything and you're going to be indifferent towards them because, eh, that's who you are, and unless things can put on a little circus act, you see these ones of mine putting on these ridiculous shows, you know, they're saying to themselves, you know, what can I do to make her like me? And trust me, it, you know, in real life, it doesn't look like it. You see that. I'm being still being bullied on YouTube. So, you know, that's, you have to create that. You, and it's easy to do. They're not smarter than we are. You know, they're just more... focused on what we're doing instead of what we're saying and we're mo more focused on what we're saying because that's all we do is communicate verbally you know and if you said well you know the internet has really changed that because you know I would say no the internet's made it even worse because you can't really have you know it's hard to inject sarcasm and emotion and stuff when you're typing so you know we're dependent on verbal and so we're losing any ability to coordinate our body language and if you said well who can you name in uh society that's an expert with that uh any homicide detective any homicide detective yeah they can tell these people's body language all day long regardless of what they're saying any cop 
you know, my friend Breck's a deputy, and what ends up happening to these guys, and I don't know if any of you guys out there are watching, or come, uh, they start to think everybody's lying. They don't. They second guess every, and Breck does, I've known Breck since he was six years old. He still looks at me sometimes like he doesn't believe what I'm saying. You know, because they're conditioned to people, everybody's lying. And so if you said, you know, these dogs with food drive, with no food drive, believe that people are lying, I would say, yeah, it is, it is kind of a long, um, that, anyway, you guys, I just got a, uh, a text, so I've got to run, but all of you work on that, just don't say anything, and Marcus, let me know, I brought Marcus probably to go, uh, but if my little tan puppy, I don't know what I would do with that, though, uh, if I did get that puppy for Marcus, it would probably end up, it would probably, by, uh, um, uh, the time it was like 12 weeks old of eating me alive, I wouldn't be able to handle it. Or it would have jumped up and knocked me out or something. All right, you guys, I will uh, see you guys in a minute outside.